hey guys welcome to new video and in this video we are going to create a android app with, with the help of which we will be able to detect the noises in the frame from the direct feed from the camera this video will be in the continuation of this series and until now we have completed five videos and the prerequisite for this video is that you should have watched at least until part three uh, more importantly part one and part three for continuation in this video so let's open the android studio project previously which we have created until part 3 and you should have at least this code if you are following it from part 3 so let's get inside the video first let me explain you the main basic logic we are going to follow so we are going to create a two variables previous frame and the current frame so we are going to have two matrices matrices for previous matrix it is going to store the previous frame and current matrix will going to store the current frame and then we are going to find the absolute difference between both of the frames and if there is some difference available then we are going to detect the contours in that difference and there are, if there are some contours meaning there is change in the frame so if there is change in the frame then it means that there is noise in the frame and if there is noise we are going to show it with the help of the rectangles or drawing the contours so i hope you should be getting it idea what we are going to do so let's get in over here and create gray let's create current and previous frame for storing the frames and also we are going to use rgb frame on which we are going to draw the results the rectangles and these both previous and current frame are going to be gray scale since there is no use of uh, red green blue channel in that and here uh, on camera view started as i told in part 3 that this is only going to be called once so over here we are going to initialize our variables that's all so now we are going to create a boolean variable in a minute you will know why we need this so we will name it is init and by default it will going to have a false value and i have explained in part 3 that on camera frame function is called when the frame is read from the camera so we are going to come in over here first of all the previous frame is going to be empty it, there will be nothing in that so we are going to first initialize the previous frame and from the next frame onwards we are going to do the rest of the work so first we can do that by using this is init variable which we have created and if it is not already initialized we are going to say previous gray is equals to input frame dot gray to read this frame and convert it to gray mat and we are going to make is init equal to true meaning it is now initialized and instead of running another else statement after this if we are going to return this frame as it is from over here let's say for now we are going to return previous gray and as i have told we are going to return rgb let's read the rgb over here it is the same process input frame dot rgba and let's read the current frame also over here we are going to say input frame dot rg uh, gray and when the work which we are going to do in this block when all of the work is done we are going to update the previous gray by saying previous gray is equals to current gray dot clone now over here we are going to detect the noises in this block of code so let's do this now for the functionality of absolute difference between the previous and current frame we are going to use core library which is given by OpenCV and in that there is a function called absolute difference and we need a matrix to store the difference so let's do the same thing let's create another variable for storing the difference DIFF and let's initialize it over here that's all now in this we are going to pass all of the requirements it need first of all current frame then previous frame and then the difference which will be inside this so for now let's instead of returning rgb let's return diff to see what is going on let me run it okay so you can see that it is working as expected let me just close this up and our most of the work is now done we need to convert this diff into a binary image which can only have the value either 0 or 1 not the in between values as you know that the pixel can take the values from 0 to 255 so we just need either 0 or 1 so for that we are going to use a functionality called inside img process and it is thresholding we are going to threshold the value if above 40 make it 1 if 
below 40 make it zero so it needs the source will be diff destination will be diff and the thresh value as i said 40 and the maximum value is 255 and now it needs the type of threshold we want either inverse or not so we are not going to use inverse so we are going to say img process dot thresh binary let's close this and now if we run it like this then you can see the difference all right so you can see that now we are getting the difference more confident either zero or one no in between gray values are there so close this and let's get back in over here now once we have the boundaries of the motion we are just going to detect the contours around that boundaries so again it is so easy just going to use img proc img processor dot find contours and it is going to take the image in which we are going to detect the contours and then for storing the contours we are going to need a list of mat of points so let's quickly get in over here create list of mat of point and call it cnts and we can initialize it if you want over here new array list all right now we are going to get back in over here we are going to say find contours then the source will be diff and then we are going to store the contours in cnts which we have just created hierarchy will be we are not going to use this hierarchy and the mode and the method so mode will be img processor dot retr tree return tree type of and the method we are going to use is simple one chain approx simple and you can read from the documentation of opencv what is the difference between chain approx none and chain approx simple and this is the difference this one the left image is chain approx none and the right image is chain approx simple so the simple method just returns the vertices point so just four points if you want to detect a contour around a rectangle and if you are going to use chain approx none it is going to return all the points around that boundary so we don't need this intense level of detection we just want to use this since the work is not much and it's going to consume very less amount of memory also so with this done we get the contours in cnts for drawing the contours either we can say img process dot draw contours and now this time i'm going to draw contours on a rgb frame and i forgot to see the parameters we need to pass so it need the image on which you want to draw then contours and then index and then color so we want to draw this time on RGB. The contours are CNTS. The index we want to draw all the contours and the color will be in the scalar. And we can say B and instead of returning diff, let's return RGB and run it one more time. See, hopefully we'll get the final result. Yes, we are getting just some weird type of drawing. Let me rerun to show you that. You can see that. Can you guess why is this happening? Let me just show you. So we are storing our contours in over here in this cnts this is a list and i guess what this find contour is doing it is appending the contours at the back of this cnts we are going to clear this after our all of the work is completed and now it should be fine yes it is running as expected and let me give some thickness to it if possible Yes, you can give by appending another comma and let's give thickness of about 4 and rerun it. Yeah, it is running as expected. And now the last thing I want to show you is how to draw the rectangles around the detected contour. Again, it is so easy. So as you see that this is a list of mat of point. This CNTS I'm talking of. So we are going to run a for each loop and we are going to say mat of point m in cnts and there are couple of things you can apply on this m you can get a bounding rectangle around this m which is one of the functionality or you can have a contour area method to find the area of the detected contour and for, uh, for this functionality we are just needing a functionality which is bounding rectangle so just bounding rectangle and pass this m so we are not going to use this if and let me get rid of this so we are going to store this rectangle in r e c t r and for drawing the rectangle again there is a functionality in image process dot rectangle 
and we want to draw on RGB the rectangle is R and the color will be in scalar let's draw a blue color so R G the thickness let's give 3 and rerun it to see if it is working or not yeah you can see that it is running as expected and I hope this is enough for this video and if you have learned something new in this video then make sure to like this video and subscribe for more such videos that's all for this video goodbye